This is Love Notes, daily devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Grace and peace to you. Well, our friend Job has suffered as deeply as anyone can suffer. He's lost all of his things. He's lost his wealth. He's lost his place and his fame in the world. He's no longer the most revered man in the East. He's a man sitting in the ashes, rubbing his sores. Even his wife doesn't understand Job. He seems to be all alone, a man of deep and dreadful sorrow. So what do you need in those times to get through that? Well, in this part of the second chapter of Job, we're told that now when Job's three friends heard of all these troubles that had come upon him, each of them set out from his home. Elphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the Namthite. They met together to go and console and comfort him. That was their goal. Isn't it true that often what gets us through the dark times is our friendships, people who come and support us? But even as I say that, I know that sometimes well-meaning friends don't provide the comfort I need, and we'll see that unfold. But at this point, his three friends go to comfort him, an act of compassion. When they saw him from a distance, they did not recognize him. That's how bad his life had become. Wasting away in the ashes, covered with sores, they raised their voices and wept aloud. They tore their robes and threw dust in the air upon their heads. Signs of grieving, public manifestations of grieving for their friend Job. Now, this isn't just a show. This is their own hearts being offered to God. The pain that they share with their friend. This is true compassion. And listen to what they do. The first thing that they do. They sat with him on the ground for seven days and seven nights. No one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his suffering was very great. For seven days, they just sat with him. They were present to him. This is not a time for trivial conversation. It's not a time to say, oh, I remember that time when I got a sore on my eye or to kind of make some connection. It is enough to be with Job in his suffering. And so that's what they do. They sit with him for seven days and seven nights, a good long period. They don't speak to him. What would they say? When we train people as Stephen ministers, as Eucharistic ministers, in the work of helping us with pastoral ministry, one of the first habits that has to be broken is the need to always have something to say, listening. That's where it begins. So they sit with him. They don't say anything because his suffering is very great and they don't have any words for it. These are compassionate friends who seek to give some comfort by their presence, by their care, and words aren't necessary. How often have you been in a situation where someone searching for words to say says exactly the wrong thing? Uh, things like, well, God never gives us more than we can handle, which really isn't in the Bible at all. It's just made up. And it's also not true. Or they say to us, well, things could be worse. Not for me, they can't. Or my least favorite, must be all part of God's plan. It is not God's plan that Job is suffering. God is engaged in a battle with evil. The accuser is bringing about, uh, uh, shaking the very foundations of what faith is all about. Job is in the middle, and that's a terrible place to be. 
But we have to trust that God will, in the end, redeem Job in some way. That's the message of the cross. When we go to our friends who are suffering, words are not necessary. A kind look, a shared tear, a hand held, that's enough. And remember, these three guys sat with him on the ground for seven days and seven nights and said nothing. And that was compassion. Amen.